tools for splicing are basically um, the the split tool, which will split your track in half, and the join tool, which will make the two halves join. There's also a smaller window at the bottom of GarageBand, which helps you see in a very precise way what you're editing. So you can actually look at the sound waves to see where the audio beats are as it's going. But splicing is not all about looking, it's also about listening. You should also listen to the song to find out when the big moments in the song that are most uh, suited to slicing are. For instance, when does the chorus begin? Does that chorus always begin at the same place? If you can splice at that spot, it's far less likely that anyone will notice your splice because you'll be splicing at a point where the band has naturally covered it up, maybe with a cymbal. Anyways, I'll show you how to do that. So now it's time to look at how to splice things on GarageBand. And so the first thing I want you to do is open up a song to put into GarageBand. And this is pretty easy. You can just double click on a thing that you have in a window over here and choose a song. For this, I'm going to choose this bad girl song by the Detroit Cobras. And in GarageBand, it's really easy to add a song. You just pull it over to the GarageBand window and it'll drop right in. Importing files, got a new track, it's got Bad Girl on it, awesome. And so now I just imported that song. If I go back to the beginning and I hit play, it's going to sound like this. So the key to splicing is really using your ears. You need to figure out where in the internal logic of the track the break comes where things will be consistent because you don't want to splice from the middle of nowhere to the middle of nowhere, it will sound bad. Um, to do a splice, you've got this feature under edit and it's called split. And you split the thing in two, you take out the part you don't want to listen to, and then you put it together. And I'll show you a bad splice. And you can see there's even a shortcut for split, can, um, option T. So if I had option T, it'll split the track there. And I can just stop and split the track there. And then once you've done that, you can click on these bits. If you double click, it'll bring this menu up. But um, you can click on them, and once you highlight one, you can just pull it off the track. I put it, usually put them on another track and mute it so I don't have to listen to them. And I can zoom in with this thing to make my splice very, very. very very close. So all I have to do is pull this over and this is a part where this bottom thing does actually come in a little handy because you can see very precisely what's going on with your splice and you just pull the two things together till they kiss. Like so. And then if you play it back Now that was a bad splice because I just grabbed two things and cut something out and it kind of sounds like it jumps. Listen again. Like it sounds like a broken record there. And you don't want that in a splice. You want it to sound in a way that nobody would know that there was ever a splice there. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So that you have to listen and count beats to the song to figure out where the exact point is in the measure. Usually try and be consistent. Measures come in usually in rock music like fours one, two, three, four. So if you cut at the one, when you come back to cut back in, you want something similar in the song, you want to cut that one beat again. Uh, it sounds really complicated, um, and I'll be honest, it takes a little practice, but if you use your ear, it will really work out. So I'm gonna undo this splice. Undo, undo, undo. Um, I'll even undo split, undo split. So now we're back back to basics and we can kind of listen to the whole track. And I know around where in the track I want to come in. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to start counting beats. You're going to hear me one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to hit stop when I get to the right beat because I know that's going to come back later in the song. So raising the volume so you can hear better. And I will show you how this works. Time to splice. <laughs> So now, for me, it's just a matter of catching the music, 
Right, and I hit stop the second I hit that beep because I know that's exactly where I cut it. And I'm going to hit the uh, option T right there, and you can see the logic. It's right before she says, "I said no" in the chorus. So this place comes right after that on the beat after that, and that's going to recur later in the song where she does that. I think probably around here. So right there, it's the same exact song structure. And so what you do in a splice is you're shrinking a song to make it fit more within the media that you're usually editing it to. So we're going to take out the middle. So this is, becomes more of a sort of one minute song than a three minute song. So going back here, now I'm going to do that cut again by hitting stop and then splitting it in two. So three, one, two, three, one. Right there, I said no, and then the one beat right there. Um, and I just hit uh, Apple T to put that split there. And now if I'm lucky, after I pull this out, you won't even be able to tell I pulled it out. So the trick is now unselecting things, selecting it, selecting what you want, pulling it out, and then pulling this together in such a way that the song is seamless. And again, I like to zoom in when I do this because it's really hard to do this in a precise way without zooming. Sometimes I'll zoom all the way in so I get it exactly right. Like that. And you can check on the bottom of the precise edit screen. That's around 36 seconds right there. So it looks good. It looks very, very close, if not exact. Um, and you can even see the, the internal logic of these beats seems similar. It doesn't look like there's too much space between these drum beats here. But let's see how it sounds. Play. Oh, jumps the wrong place somehow. So now let's see how it So that was sloppy. That wasn't exactly what I wanted. Um, I wanted this to not have that much extra space. And so maybe this is a little too long. So maybe if I pull this over just a little bit more, we'll have that sort of internal consistency that we're looking for. Maybe that's more like what we're looking for. Let's try that. That's much better. So you can't even hear that if you listen for it. Um, and in fact, if we we take these two and we go to edit uh, join, you don't even see it. We'll mix them down, and we'll have one big new track uh, where you can't even see what I took out. So if we go hit play. So that's how you basically turn a track into a smaller track. And so now you can see this, this whole track, this whole new thing, is only a minute and 20 seconds. So if I wanted to make a soundtrack to a video that was only a minute and 20 seconds, this would be just about perfect. So that's how you do